<laughs> I love you. I love every one of you. Some more than others, though. Happy Wednesday, everybody. So tonight, we're leading with golf. <laughs> I don't know why, but we are. Perhaps it's because I know so much about it. And by so much, I mean very little. When I hear four, I think of how many times I get up at night to pee. <laughs> when I hear about a nice sand wedge, I picture myself in a thong in Cabo. <laughs> when I hear about a handicap, I think of my favorite spot to park. <laughs> and when I hear of a foursome, mm, I think about the wild weekend I once had with the Jonas Brothers. <laughs> All right. But for once, there's actual news. The PGA Tour and Saudi-backed Live Golf are merging in a historic partnership that has rattled the sports world to its very core. Yes, yes, it's a blockbuster deal that I don't care about. <laughs> but it apparently settles an intense year-long feud that's led to a split among our nation's golfing treasures. True, the golf world hasn't seen a dust-up this huge since Tiger Woods' ex-wife caught him with his putter in a Perkins waitress sand trap. <laughs> and this can only mean one thing. Damn, Trump is right again. <laughs> Would you know it? Last year, former President Donald Trump, who got flack for hosting a live event at his sumptuous New Jersey golf club, predicted this merger would happen on his Truth Social Network. So now he's praising the deal, writing, quote, great news from Live Golf, a big, beautiful, and glamorous deal for the wonderful world of golf. Congrats to all. Yeah, big, beautiful, and glamorous. The same three adjectives I use when staring at the mirror on my ceiling. <laughs> And you know, since Trump loves this big, beautiful deal, the Democrats have got to hate it. Senate Dems are calling on regulators to examine the merger, and Dick Durbin expects the Senate Foreign Relations Committee to probe it as well. And what about old Joe? Do you have a comment on the PGA Tour merger with Liv? Do you support it, sir? I plan on being a PGA. Uh. <laughs> He's planning on being in the PGA as what? Lawn fertilizer for the course? What's going on? All right. So I know what you're thinking because we're a lot alike. What does this all mean for the sport of golf? I mean, it's Saudi Arabia. I mean, does the game itself start making changes like hiding IEDs and sand traps? <laughs> Are the major tournaments still going to be 72 holes? <laughs> Think about it. I mean, do you get a virgin for each? <laughs> and if you get a hole in one, do you finally get to meet Osama bin Laden? <laughs> Don't even get me started on what happens at holes 9 and 11. <laughs> Why we don't do golf. <laughs> Predictably, the media are losing their minds. This is just a, a situation here where money talks, mm -hmm. okay? Money talks and morality can get in the way of it and for, for many, uh, money ends up winning. Everybody's getting rich on this deal. Everybody's getting rich. I don't know how you go from calling them terrorists to calling them great business partners. Donald Trump, the PGA, had also shoved him out and his golf courses off of the PGA Tours. Well, now he can come right back because he's already in bed with the Saudis. I know. Imagine that, doing business with the Saudis. Don't we already do business with the Saudis? <laughs> These are just some of the U.S. corporations involved in Saudi Arabia. PepsiCo, Raytheon, Hilton, Boeing, and that's just to name a few. They're also one of our four, one of our top five sources of petroleum imports. So maybe getting upset now over a golf merger seems a little too late in the game. But also, did the media get this bent out of shape over China's business dealings with the NBA? I mean, they have women and children working 15-hour days to make sneakers for some of the biggest feet in the world. <laughs> When, I, ironically, the makers have the tiniest. I know. 
They told Inez Cantor Freedom to shut up and dribble, and then they benched him. Where are they when President Xi violates human rights like it's par for the course? And never mind the deadly viruses spewing from his crappy bio labs like a clown throwing confetti at a parade. But families of 9-11 victims are upset, too, since Live Golf is owned by Saudi Arabia, home of the terrorists who carried out the attack. And they have a point. Fact is, Saudi Arabia does have a reputation worse than Kevin Spacey at Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> but then, why do we run our cars on Saudi oil? Why didn't we invade them after 9-11 while blasting Rock the Casbah by the Clash? It would have been the perfect chance to see if our weapons could beat our weapons. <laughs> And why did Joe Biden recently fist bump one of their leaders? Thankfully for Joe, at least the leader was actually there. <laughs> but two things can be true at once. Saudi Arabia can have a dismal human rights record, and this new golf league can be a fun sport to watch, you know, if you're mixing skunk weed with Dayquil. <laughs> so are we really all that shocked that the big green god won the day, especially when the big orange one told you it would happen? <laughs> nope. Sadly, it's like that anti-Semitic hack Ilhan Omar once said about the Jews, it's all about the Benjamins. And that was her worst bogey since marrying her brother, allegedly. <laughs> Let's welcome tonight's guests. You may recognize him as the white dad from every stock photo, co-host of Fox & Friends First, Todd Pyro. <laughs> She revealed the press pool to be a cesspool. Outnumbered co-host Kaylee McEnany. Yeah! His act makes cows switch from mooing to booing. Actor, writer, and comedian Jamie Lissau. Yeah! She's so skinny, her bathroom scale has a laugh track. Fox News contributor, Cat Tiff. Yeah! All right, I'm going to set you up with a question, Jamie. I expect three, maybe four golf jokes. OK. I would like at least one of them to hit. So Jamie, <laughs> mm -hmm. do they have golf in Alaska? They do have, do we have, uh, there's golf in Alaska. You can play, there's only like one day you can play. <laughs> really? In Alaska. <laughs> But because it's like the you know the summer like light, but it's all but it's it's beautiful for that one day. Mm -hmm. um, this actually this story actually upset me, and because of this, I will be boycotting golf for the last forty years. <laughs> <laughs> um, that was good. Okay, that's one. Thank you. Uh, that lady was right though. It's money talks, mm -hmm. and I don't know if you know this, but no money also talks. It says don't date a comedian. <laughs> That's true. Nobody ever says that, no money talks. Which it does, right? Yeah, yeah. How about Trump, though, for real? Yeah. He dead on predicted that. How many times have Trump predicted something? Exa it's too bad that he um, took a break from being psychic that night with Stormy Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't see that coming. Or maybe he did. <laughs> see what I did there? A little play yeah. on words. I hate golf. I was shocked that it was, that it was televised. <laughs> I had no idea that this was the. I, I did. A, I do actually know a lot about this. Though. I've been researching this story. I've been following it for minutes, and um, I don't know. I. I just, had you ever played? I'm not a golf. I played golf. Yes. Have you? Yes. Like when I go, I like my friends will be like, "Oh, you should come with us." And I always drive the cart. Mm. You know, I take the, and I drive and do something fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, be about like 700 there, Kaylee. He was right again. Yes. I mean, you know, and I mean, I think what he, I think he kind of under, there's a weird reality about Trump that he understands that nobody is clean. Like nobody's clean. You can, you can find something about every country that's awful and you're just going to have to do business with that. Yeah, well, look, he understands golf, clearly. Yeah. Uh, he understands business and you combine the two and I'm not surprised he was prescient on this. Mm, uh, I agree that money talks. Am I allowed to use the word gross domestic product on the show? Or yes. is that too highfalutin for Gutfeld? Wow. Okay. okay. Insulted by, so, she insulted, she insult me too. Yeah, she insulted you more than me, because I'm considered smart. I, I'm joking. So, <laughs> the, the GDP, this will be a good point, I promise. I a and lot you of are reaction smart, for Greg. a joke that was pretty dumb. <laughs> 
Too late. GDP of Ireland, about 500 billion, right? Right. Okay, GDP of this Saudi Arabian investment firm, just a firm within Saudi Arabia, their so-called GDP, how much money they have on hand, uh, 600 billion. So they have the amount of money, this company in Saudi Arabia of a small country, they were offering all these players like $75 million, they called it generational wealth, and these poor people got screwed. Sorry to use a curse word there, but they oh. got screwed <laughs> um, by this PGA commissioner. I'd be pissed at him if I were a golfer. Mm. You know, Todd, this entire story is rife with the word hypocrisy. Yeah. Would you care to comment on the hypocrisy? That's 100% what this story is about. It's not about golf. It's not about Saudi Arabia and taking Saudi Arabian money, because so many companies, like you talked about in your monologue, have done that since the dawn of time. And this isn't even a story about Donald Trump. This is a story about hypocrisy. You had a PGA Tour commissioner that told these players, to Kaylee's point, that if you take this Saudi money, you'll be spitting in the faces of the 9-11 families. Mm -hmm. And then yesterday, he went went ahead and took the Saudi Arabian yeah. money. Yeah. So whether or not you think it's a good or bad idea to take Saudi Arabian money, you can't come out so vociferously at the outset and basically tell these players that they are dishonoring their country and the 9-11 victims if they want to go make a living, and then you yourself leave with a nine-figure paycheck, which you probably will, because I don't think any member of that tour wants this guy as the commission going forward. It's, fun, it's funny, and I, I, this is a serious question, and then I'll just I'll, I'll throw it out there. I, I've asked, like, if the Saudis are 100 percent behind 9-11, why didn't we do anything about it? And no one has an answer other than maybe we don't know that they—it's they, just that's where these guys lived. But if they had something to do with it, why didn't we do anything? And nobody—I don't get an answer from the experts, because there was never really a concrete answer. The only thing I can think of, you answered it in your monologue, and again, this is a big if they had a connection, it could be tied to, wait for it, the money yeah. Yeah. and the major investment that they have in all those companies that you saw in your monologue and then some. Yeah, I just can't, I, I don't know, maybe I'm too naive, but I can't see a, co a country we do business with, you, you know, sponsoring an attack on the World Trade Center. I think that that's goes against the idea of making a lot of money. But anyway. They also dismembered a journalist, though. Don't yeah. forget that, Jamal Khashoggi. Yeah, that's true. All right, last word to you, Kat. You actually were the one that pitched this story to me because you're such an avid golf fan. The only time I was ever on a golf course, I cried. <laughs> <laughs> uh, never went back. Um, yeah, obviously, princi like, principles only go so far as they remain to be convenient. Mm -hmm. uh, because you can take all of the reactions of anyone who's been mad about any of this and put them all together, and it would still not come close to that one time I was at a house party in Brooklyn and mentioned that I worked at Fox News. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> but the difference is, I wasn't offering any of those people hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah. If I would, they would have been like, we love Fox News. Right, right. Or they at least would have said, that's cool. Mm -hmm. And it would have been, you know, calm enough for me to have stayed there and not, you know, not have it end the way it did, which was not that way. Mm -hmm. uh, because people have principles and then they get offered hundreds of millions of dollars and they're like, oh, well, I think it's time to forgive 9-11. Mm -hmm. Because they want the money. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot of money. It is a lot of money. Yeah. Saudi's never offered you any money. What would you do? Oh, jeez. <laughs> I'd ask for more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a whore. <laughs> All right, before we go, tickets are available for my upcoming book tour. I'll be in Atlanta, Clearwater, Fort Myers, Providence, and of Reading, Pennsylvania. Love Reading, huh? The, pe <laughs> the peanut bar. And you can get a customized Father's Day card. I have one right here. It's customized if you pre-order the book. Ooh. Go to ggutfeld.com for details. Yeah, it is nice, stranger. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News' YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.